Welcome back to another episode in the Radiant series. Today we're covering heat transfer plates and how to install. So the first step is preparation. I will be doing another episode on design and planning, which this bit here will make a little bit more sense in, but basically the first thing you want to have done is your holes drilled so you know where your heat transfer plates are going to start. Next, you want to prepare the surface in which the heat transfer plates are going to be screwed into. More often than not, you'll find nails sticking out or all sorts of things really. So I personally use a multi-tool to clear the runway, which just ensures a nice flush connection and there's going to be nothing to penetrate or pierce my radiant pipe. Okay, so what do we need? So obviously we need the actual heat plates themselves. A word of warning to budgeting and cost, the additional cost of these plates does add up to the total project cost, so just keep that in mind for budgeting and price planning. Next, we need something to secure the plates with. I use these half inch zip-in screws, which work great. Just make sure you get plenty of them as you're gonna need 10 per plate. So for this project, I had four tubs. Okay, so now we need something to secure those screws with. I opted for the Milwaukee stubby along with this Malco quarter inch bit, which is magnetic, which is more than enough torque for what we want here, um, along with it being lightweight and the drill bit magnetic. Okay, so now the actual installation technique. So what I did is I just hold it up, throw in a screw somewhere in the center so it just holds still, and then I can do the rest of the screws. Um, I then line up the other plate nine inches center away um, and similarly throw in one screw somewhere in the center just so it will hold in place while I can throw in the rest of the screws. So as you can see here I'm measuring that nine inches apart. Obviously this may vary a little bit depending on the width of your bays but ideally you want that nine inches on center. So once you've got that one screw in it can just hold in itself just throw in the other the, all the other screws you need to just hold it securely and once we've done that we can prepare for the next plate so what i like to do is i'll cut off a small bit of pex say about six inches in preparation for this next step so as you can see i place it into the new plate that will be going up and then place that new bit of PEX into the plate that is already up. This just ensures the PEX lines up perfectly when running your actual radiant heat PEX. You want each plate roughly one inch apart and when you get to the end of the bay you want to give yourself a little bit of decent amount of space to wrap that PEX back around. At the end of your run there's a good chance you may need to cut down your heat plates so all I do is I just use a hacksaw with a metal blade uh, like so. Make sure you kind of smooth out the edges there and uh, you're good to go. Please like and subscribe if you would like to stay tuned for future episodes.